What's up, hobby friends, and welcome to my video tutorial on how to paint Marvel Crisis Protocols Crystal. I have all of the colors I used on this model listed on the screen. So if you want to go ahead and pause the video, you can note those down, and then we can dive into actually painting the figure. So this is really going to be an exercise mostly in painting a yellow skin suit. I'm going to be working this off of a black primer and we'll do a couple of airbrush passes just to build up some of the base coats when doing it by hand. But really this is showing you how to, or we'll be showing you how to paint a bright yellow, a nice warm rich yellow on top of a really dark primer, how to build up our layers and then create that, that nuance in the midtones and shadows. In terms of prep, the only thing I've really sub-assembled is the water effect. This is just so I can paint this uh, as a separate component, get into all the angles. And similarly, I'll be able to reach all around crystal without any issue. I'm gonna prime this model with Vallejo Surface Primer Black. I'll do that and then I'll paint the base off camera as well. This is gonna fit into my Marvel collection. I already painted the base a number of times for tutorials I've already uploaded. So you can check those out. I'll have links in the description below. Check those out. It's the exact same technique and recipe. And then we'll dive on into crystal itself. So starting with EK's World War I French Brown, I apply a nice even base coat over all of the elements that are going to be the yellow suit. And then I do a simple zenithal highlight using AK Yellow's number six earth yellow. I'm really focusing on the top of the chest, the breasts, the abs, and the tops of the legs. And then I'm making sure to get the back and her buttocks as well. And while I'm airbrushing, I'll also use AK Graphite the base coat, the base stone, before I go in and hand paint it. With some AK Black, I'm going to base coat the metal sewer grate before we can do our non-metal metal copper. I'll use Scale Colors African Shadow and I'll apply a base coat over the raised surface, making sure to keep the black lining around the edge as well as the inside of the actual grate itself. The highlight I'm gonna use some AK Saddle Brown, and I'm just gonna use this straight, no mixing, no intermediary steps. I'm gonna be focusing my highlights with the front of the base in mind. That's where all my highlights are going to be. And then I'm gonna use a sort of sketchy, scratchy motion with the paintbrush to create the texture as I'm feathering and fading the color out to create my blend. My next highlight is using AK Deep Brown. We'll continue to reinforce that front to back highlight Again, using short brush strokes to create this worn and beaten texture. The highlight, I'm gonna start mixing in progressive amounts of AK Pale Yellow into the deep brown, reinforcing the blend. And once I've reached about a 50-50 mix, I'm gonna start applying some edge highlights on the back. So this is wherever the reflected light is going to occur on the edges facing away from the light source. Make sure that you highlight all of the round portions again on the edges facing away from the light source and then continue to highlight up to pure pale yellow. I'm going to be using my brush strokes, creating that texture, making sure that it's nice and worn, adding some chips and scratches. And then once I hit pure yellow, I'm going to highlight all of the edges and corners that are directly facing towards my light source. So these are the edges that are receiving primary highlights. In the previous highlight edge step where we use that 50-50 mix, that's where we were highlighting all of the edges receiving a reflected light source. And then with pure AK pastel yellow, we'll finish off with some sharp highlights on the edges receiving the primary highlights. And I'll make sure to put little dots of spectral highlights on all the corners as well. I'm also going to make sure to apply this pure pastel yellow highlight on those inner curves of the sewer grade itself. And then finally, using Ging's Workshop's Nella Hack Oxide, I'm going to apply some rust and verdigris on the base. I find this color works very well on the darker elements, and you'll want to do a couple of thin coats for a stronger saturation. I'm going to start with another base coat of number six earth yellow on the yellow suit. And this is more just to give myself a stronger, flatter coat of that mid-tone on the suit itself. And then to begin highlighting, I'm going to start mixing in progressive amounts of AK's Volcanic Yellow. 
I can probably start with about a 50-50 mix because Volcanic Yellow is fairly the loot out of the pot. And you can see that I'm ignoring all of the seams and sort of the raised edges. I'm focusing on the big shapes first. I'm going to go in with the second highlight of Pure Volcanic Yellow. Again, there's no need to really mix a lot of steps because the yellow itself is fairly dilute out of the pot. And then yellow is a fairly translucent paint. So I can, out of the pot, just fade and glaze the color in to create my highlights. My next highlight step is using AK Yellow. And at this stage, I'm going to start to focus on some of the individual folds, particularly along the abdomen. There's some lovely folds running across her torso as she twists, and I want to make sure that I capture those, as well as on her hips with her legs raised and the backs on sides of the knees. Using French brown and yellow, I looted. I'm going to first create the shades for the seams down the center as well as along the legs, and then I'll use yellow to highlight those raised edges. Using a mix of pale yellow and yellow, we're going to continue to highlight the folds of the suit, taking care now not to overpaint on any of the seams. The focus of this highlight is going to be on the upper part of the body, so top of the breasts, as well as the top of the where the rib cage would be or the abs would be. I want to bring a strong highlight to the top of the body. Using a 50-50 mix of earth yellow and number six yellow, we're going to do a glaze over the mid-tones and shadow tones. What I'm looking to do with this is just smooth out some of my blending, tie in all of the colors, and because I'm spraying from underneath, patch some of those seams I may have missed. And then using some Game Ink Yellow, I did a few glazes into the mid and shadow tones. I found that with my previous mix, the saturation or the richness of the mid and shadow tones was a little bit more on the ochre side, and I wanted to bring an orangey redness to the uh, color of the suit. So that's what the Game Ink Yellow is for. The more passes you do, the more intense that orangey red tone will be. Be careful not to go overboard on the highlights as it will knock back your values. With some black, we're now going to base coat all of the black elements of the suit. Be careful when you're doing the stripes. You want to be not, careful not to overpaint onto the yellow. The highlight, I'm going to use pure rubber black. Between the black and the rubber black, it's kind of subtle until you actually put the two colors side by side. So make sure you dilute your paint and feather the rubber black out. When you're highlighting the straps running down her legs and your arms, all the highlights of the yellow. To highlight the black, we're gonna start mixing in progressive amounts of APC interior light into a rubber black. You wanna build up the layers, and I apologize for the focus on this shot. Or you really want to just to build up the black to a brightness that we're happy with. How bright or how dark you take the black entirely depends on the look you want. I went with a, a fairly bright highlight, especially on the armor on the top of her chest. So we're looking at the shoulder pads as well as the V piece running over her collarbone and up to her neck. Finally, going back in with some black, I'm going to dilute the color and do glazes to smooth up my blending and, where necessary, redefine the creases, especially where I have overpaint on the shoulder pads where it meets the V, uh, redefining any of the edges of the straps, places like the belt, and especially on the belt trim running around her waist. Leaf the skin, I'm going to start with Dark Shadow Flesh Tone and just get a nice even base coat over all of the face. Make sure not to overpaint on the black, especially around the collar. My first highlight will be with AK Base Flush, and I'm just gonna go straight into this color, base coating all of the skin, leaving the deepest recesses in that dark shadow flesh tone. I'm going to be painting the eyes in a glowing blue color, so I'm not really focused on picking out too many of the folds or highlight edges, especially around the eye sockets, because that's all going to be OSL. To highlight the skin, I'm going to go with some beige red, and I'm going to mix progressive amounts of that into my base flesh. Again, not really focusing too much detail around the eye sockets, but I do want to focus on key features like the bridge of the nose, the top and bottom of the lips, the cheekbones, the chin, as well as the brow and the forehead. 
And the goal is to just mix progressive highlights working all the way to pure beige red. Be careful not to over highlight or over define any wrinkles or folds. The more wrinkles you add, the older you're gonna make her look. From beige red, I'm gonna mix in progressive amounts of light flesh. And again, we're looking at picking out the nostrils, the tip of the nose, eyebrows, cheekbones, and the lips and chin. You want to keep your highlights soft and subtle, and not over-age the figure. You can see that I also black-lined the eye socket, and this was more just so that I could see where the eyes were going to be. And you want to make sure that you're highlighting with your OSL in mind, because the eyes are going to be glowing. I'm focusing stronger highlights than I normally would on the inside of the bridge of the nose. Finally, I'm going to go in with some Gucci Violet and apply some light glazes to the mid and shadow tones. This will help to smooth up some of my blending, redefine some of those deep shadows, and add a little bit of that color nuance into the shadow tones. I'm going to pick out the jowls as well as the base between the lips. For the eyes, I'm going to start with a base coat of light Prussian Blue. I'm going to fill in the eye socket and because we're doing an OSL, I want to make sure that I'm pulling the highlights down and I'm glazing where we're going to have that light splashing over. So we're looking at her jaw lines, we're looking at the inside of her nose, as well as her eyelids underneath the brow. You want to make sure that you do nice thin layers and build up your glazes so that you can slowly ramp up and increase the intensity as you focus your highlighting around the eye sockets and then fade out the glazes or fade out the blends as you pull further away down the face. Next, with blue-green, we're continuing to fill in the eye socket. I wanna make sure that there's um, no light pressure in blue, the eye socket's completely filled, and I'll apply a bit more of this glaze, focusing around the bridge of the nose, right where the eye sockets meet, and then fade the color down to the side. I'm just doing a few extra passes to make sure that I have a pure base coat of that blue green. From there, we're gonna start mixing in some greenish white for our first highlight, and this is where we would paint the actual eyeball. So I'm gonna leave a bit of that blue green showing around the edge, and I'm gonna to start to focus on the actual eyeball itself. We'll get both sides, we'll do it a couple of times, do a few passes. And then we'll go back in with a pure highlight of greenish white, and we'll just highlight the eye socket itself. Now, depending on how bright you want the eyes to be, you can also continue to highlight up to pure white as well. You don't just have to stop at greenish white. Based with the hair, I'm going to start with AK Black Red. I'm going to paint over all of the hair, making sure there's no black, especially around the edges where it meets the skin. And then we'll go in with some burnt red and do our first highlight pass. I'm going to largely ignore the individual hair strands, and I'm focusing on the broader shapes and the overall form and volume of the head. So I'm mainly focusing around the crease and the front curl of the hair. Our next highlight is with AK's Medium Rust. My first few passes diluted are gonna focus around the form, but as I build up the color, I'll start to pick out some of the more prominent individual strands, especially around the crease and the front of the head. I'm gonna continue highlighting by mixing in progressive amounts of orange brown. And as we highlight up and as we go more and more orange brown, we'll pick out more of these prominent folds or more of these prominent individual strands. The goal is to reach pure medium rust or pure orange brown. And for that highlight, I'm focusing on just the front of the head right above the forehead. Finally, I'm going to be taking reddish black, diluted, and we're going to do a few glazes around the sides and the back of the head. And the goal is to smooth out our blends, deepen the shadows, and then just where necessary help to redefine or pick out some of those individual strands that we may have missed with the highlighting. 
To paint the fire, I'm going to start with pale sand and I'm going to do a base coat over all of the fire elements. This is going to help me apply my yellow color without having to build it up on black. I find that yellow, because it is so translucent, you have to have a mid or bright tone underneath to help you um, lay down the initial color and pale sand is what I'm using for this. So do a few passes, make sure that your pale sand is nice and opaque. And then we'll take our yellow and we'll do a base coat on top of that. And the pale sand will help give us that vibrancy and that intensity with much fewer passes. I think with the yellow, I only had to do maybe two or three passes of the pale yellow on top of the pale yellow to get a nice even base coat. From there, we'll take a volcanic yellow and we'll start to glaze down our cooler area, so our shading. I'm gonna be focusing on the tip of the fire and as I glaze down, I'm gonna focus more and more on the recesses of the fire. This glaze will also help to fill in the gaps and where the yellow may not have been purely opaque will just help to give it that yellow tone again. To get the orange tone, I'm gonna to mix in progressive amounts of blood red into my volcanic yellow and basically glaze top down. As I glaze in, I wanna to continue to focus in on the creases and then feather it out to create a bit of a blend. And then finally with pure blood red, I'm gonna focus on the tip of the fire where it's gonna be the, the coolest, focusing on those recess and shadow tones. Effectively, we're doing a red to orange to yellow fade top down, where yellow is going to be our brightest, hottest source of the fire. And as it goes cooler and cooler, it becomes more orange and more red. And then finally, using white and yellow, I'm going to start to highlight the strands closest to the fingers and the hands. So what I'm going to do is start with a 50-50 mix of the two colors. And then as I work my way further up, I'll add in more and more yellow. And as I work my way further down towards the intense heat of the fire where her hand is, I'll add more and more white. So at the base of the fire, my highlights will be pure white. And as I work my way up, it'll work its way into pure yellow and I'll continue to highlight those strands all the way up at the fire. Don't be afraid to add a few dots or spotting of the yellow and the white in some parts of the fire to create sort of that ember or, or sparking feel that you might have in like a campfire or something. It helps us to add that little bit of texture to the fire and make it visually more interesting. To nuance the entire figure, I'm gonna take some Drushi Violet in my airbrush, mixed 50-50 with water and then some Flow Improver. And my goal with this is just to nuance the midtone and shadows. Overall, basically tie in the entire piece with this environmental lighting. It's a way that I sort of integrate this color into all my marble models, so that even if everything has a very unique palette, I still have some common colors that tie everything together. The base coat the water, I'm gonna use light Prussian blue in the airbrush and just apply a base coat over all of the water. And then to create some zenith highlights with the airbrush, I'm gonna start with some aquatic turquoise. I'm gonna be focusing on top down, making sure that I keep the light Prussian blue in some of the deepest shadows. And then I'll do the same thing with blue green. Again, focusing on those highlights. And the goal with this is to build up to a pure blue green base coat. You can do this by hand. I'm using the airbrush just to expedite the process and save myself a lot of time. And then I'm gonna use blue-green by hand to go in and just pick out a lot of the individual water folds and start to um, apply a strong, even base coat. Much like you did with the yellow suit, I find with the airbrush, even if you're airbrushing a pure, in this case, blue-green color, it's never quite the same opacity as doing it by hand. So I wanna make sure that after I apply this blue-green with the airbrush, I go in by hand and just reapply that base coat and give myself a nice opaque finish to work on top of. From there, we're gonna start mixing in progressive amounts of greenish white to create the highlighting. This is probably the most tedious part of the water, and it's just a matter of taking your time, 
building up your highlights and then focusing um, from bottom to top, getting brighter and brighter as you get closer towards the tip of the water where it starts to really foam. You want to make sure that you keep your deepest recesses in the light Prussian blue or quarter turquoise, whatever you airbrushed uh, base tone. And as you highlight up, you want to start to think about the, the texture of the water or the flow of the water. You're going to be creating um, the sort of refl reflected or refracted water highlight lines all the way throughout the form of the water. I'll show you what I mean after I've painted it, but I'll include in this segment just sort of what I'm doing as I'm highlighting up. You can sort of see where I'm focusing my highlights. I probably spent as much time doing the water as I did on painting the actual figure of crystal itself, just because the step progression from blue green into pure greenish white does take quite a while. So here you see I'm going in with pure greenish white and I'm focusing on not just the brightest highlights, but starting to work up the quote unquote texture of the water itself. So if you've ever seen photos of really clear water um, under, um, under the water itself, the light refracting through the surface of the water onto the ground creates this cool wavy blue texture line. And that's what I'm gonna try and capture with this greenish white highlight on a lot of the bigger, flatter surfaces of the water. So you can start to see that I'm starting to create these um, white highlight lines throughout the texture of the water itself. I'm trying to get this sort of reflected look. So it's not just a, a dark to light blue to white fade, but that it looks like there is light refracting through the actual water itself and creating this um, illusory feel. And this is what the water will look like after I'm done with it. You can see how I've used the greenish white to create a lot of this uh, white line highlighting throughout the entire piece. I'm then going to take a 50 50 mix of aquatic turquoise and light Prussian blue, diluted about 50 50 with water, and then we're just going to do a subtle glaze to smooth out those blends, knock back some of the mid and shadow tones, and just deepen some of those shadows again. You can see, especially in areas where the highlight may be a little harsh doing progressive coats of this glaze helps to knock it back and smooth everything together. I have my compressor set to a fairly low PSI, about 10 or 15 PSI, and I'm spraying from underneath the model so that the paint catches in the mid and shadow tones and it preserves the highlighting. Once that's done, I'm gonna go in with pure white and just recapture my brightest highlights and starts to pick out where the water is going to foam. And this is particularly important at the tip of the water, as well as the back around the very, very edge of the front of it. And then once the water's glued down, I'll take the light Prussian blue and the aquatic turquoise, and I'll do glazes onto the base stone to help fade the water into the actual ground itself. So it feels like the water is being pulled out of the ground and then thrown in deep. So you want to start with very thin glazes, Start with the light Prussian blue and then work your way up into the aquatic turquoise. As you get closer and closer to the actual water points itself, you can go more and more opaque with your glazes. I'm also gonna follow the path of the water so that where the water curves around, even if it's not touching the base, I'll do some blue glazes that you get a sort of shadow of the water motion onto the stone. And then finally, I'm gonna apply a, a layer of weathering powder to the base. This is a 50-50 mix of AK's burnt umber and dark yellow ochre. Much like with the Gucci Violet, I use this on all my Marvel models as a way of introducing a, a color that helps to unify everything in my collection even if all the models on top have very unique color palettes. I'm focusing this mainly around the crevices of the sidewalk and then where the stone rubble meets the actual base itself, taking care not to uh, apply this onto where I have the blue glaze. And then where it gets messy on the edges, I'll go back in with a clean, damp brush and I'll just clean up the edges Although you may find that you have to go back in with your black and just repaint that base trim. 
And then finally, once you're happy with that, I'm gonna fix the powders with some spritzes of mineral spirits, and this will help to fix the pigment to the base. So the mineral spirits will take about 45 minutes to an hour to fully dry. And once it does, we can then go in with a varnish of choice and seal our model. I'll be using Mr. Hobby's Super Clear, which is a nice matte varnish that isn't too flat, doesn't knock back the colors too much, but still provides really good protection because ultimately this is a tabletop gaming piece for me. So that about wraps up this video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope it breaks down and shows you, especially for painting yellow, that it's not really a difficult color. Very easy to tackle if you know how to build up your layers and build up your steps. So make sure you like the video, subscribe for more awesome weekly content, and if you want to check more of the social media platforms, I'll make sure to have links in the video description below. As always, until next time, happy hobbying.